Sasur Kaal Amritsar. Keso Ho Tusi. It is a true honor for us to be here today uh, in Amritsar at TEDx and share with you our upside down story. So, our story starts with a picture. A picture of a seemingly ordinary shoe that went viral in 2017. Not because the shoe is particularly interesting, but more because of what we see in it. Let me show you. Oleg, what color do you see in that shoe? That is clearly a pink shoe with a white stripe. Well, I clearly see a bluish green with a gray stripe. So, who here in the audience sees, just like me, that it clearly is a pink shoe Show with a white stripe? Show of hands, please. Pink, of course. Pink, 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 pink. Pink. And who clearly sees a bluish green? Show hands, hands up. please. What's wrong with you? <laughs> so, um, to make matters worse, one could easily go crazy over this picture. People close to you, people that you love, seeing something completely different than what you perceive. And depending on your personality, you're likely to declare them crazy or think whether you've lost your mind. But somehow, the most, most people tend to distance themselves from that opposed view. But for those who think that colors can easily be manipulated, and to make matters like slightly worse, um, we have another but now a soundbite with the same yet disturbing and, and very fascinating substances. What do you hear? It's Laurel, 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 Laurel. Okay, who in the audience hears the word Laurel? Hands up, please. And, and me, yes, I hear Laurel too. And who in the audience hears the word Yanni? <laughs> Yanni? Really? That was so clearly Laurel. Right. And what the funny thing is, we, again, we are juxtaposed. Because how on earth can someone hear Laurel when it clearly says Yanni? And as I say that, as we go through the experience of not understanding the other, we automatically form camps. Camp Laurel, Camp Yanni. Camp pink and white, camp blue and gray. But the funny thing is, she does hear Laurel, and I do hear Yanni. In fact, on my poll show, Laurel, no more. Give that one 41. On my poll show, then 42% of us and 70 of us hear 41% of us hear Laurel, and 70% of us hear different. She has to have physical observations. So the interesting thing is. Here we have where the physical observation is wrong, where either side will swear that they are right and the other is wrong. But the truth of the matter is, you're both right and you're both wrong, depending on your perspective. And obviously there is a scientific explanation uh, to both these scenarios of why it happens that I would let you look up after this talk. But what we are trying to illustrate here with these examples is that one thing that we do not understand automatically tends to frustrate us. Whether it was maths at school, like, why don't I get it? Or uh, argument of a loved one in an argument, or a political view of a friend. If you don't understand the reasons that are presented to us, we fail to accept them. And, yeah. And only when we manage to understand that what is presented to us, are we able to say, ah, oh, okay, I get it. So only if I give you an explanation that the frequency at which your ear picks up sound will, will tell whether you hear Laurel or Yanni in that sound bite, will you be able to go like, ah, okay, I get that's that's okay, I get it, that's fine. So in other words, understanding is the key to acceptance. And in turn, perspective is the key to understanding. And sometimes the right perspective requires us to look at matters diametrically opposite to our own. So basically what we can conclude is that there's two ways to go about it. Either the difference pisses you off tremendously, which addresses most of us, or you aim to understand that difference and turn it into your advantage. 
For he sees something in that photo and hears something in that soundbite that I clearly miss. And vice versa. She hears something in that tune and sees something in that photograph that I clearly miss. So basically together, we see and hear more than we would alone. Being part of a mixed marriage and coming from two different cultures, we are confronted with this on a daily basis. And as with anything in life, the basics were given to us by our parents, who happen to be here tonight, um, who raised us open-minded enough to fall in love across cultures. But that open-mindedness is only maintained by a three-step structure that has helped us go down not the path of frustration, but instead choose the path of turning our differences into our strength. And we try to figure it out, but we, we notice now that we do that by the following three-step program. I was there. There we go. The first of which is admire and appreciate the differences. For we should celebrate the fact that diversity exists in this world. The second is to seek to understand that difference and aim to find a different perspective to put something into place that you perhaps didn't see before. And then ultimately, step three, turn the difference into an advantage by adopting that new understanding and marrying it to your old. For example, her perspective added a little masala to my life, I would say, <laughs> and has made me realize that my Western diet can sometimes be quite tasteless, spiceless, monotone, that her enemy cuisine. And his perspective has helped me see that the sun is not necessarily our worst enemy, and that actually being brown skin makes me beautiful and even exotic. Uh. <laughs> As has her perspective shown me fit way more family members in one car, or in one house than I ever imagined possible. <laughs> and this one brings you happy all the way. And his perspective has shown me that in fact there are other more respectable professions than being a doctor or an engineer. Oh, being an influencer or a diplomat is pretty okay as well. <laughs> so in short, admire and appreciate the difference. Analyze and understand the difference, and then lastly, turn that difference into your advantage. And if you manage to get it right, if you truly manage to admire, appreciate, and understand your differences, the results can be astounding. Two examples of this mechanism at work actually occurred in our lives and that have led to unexpected and overwhelming results and reactions. One, during our wedding here in India, a year and a half ago, when we decided to change an age-old tradition that we could have only come to with a change of perspective. A few months before, when we learned about all the steps and beautiful rituals of a Hindu wedding, there was one contentious point, the touching of the man's feet at the completion of the ceremony. Why would only the woman touch the man's feet? We asked, why would you not both touch each other's feet in mutual respect? Though, you know, using the traditional Indian perspective, it was a bit unsure that was a good idea. What would the uncles and aunties say if a man touched a woman's feet? Wouldn't they disapprove? But our mixed perspective shed a different light and led us to a very conclusive answer. And. <coughs> And the answer is that we did all. And the answer was that we would both wow. touch each other's feet in mutual respect, from a woman to a man and a man to a woman, from a wife to her husband and a husband to his wife. But the result was indeed astonishing, because after Deepa posted this picture online, it went completely viral. The next morning we received tens of thousands of messages of men and women that felt the same. And in the weeks that follow, we got dozens of media outlets to write about this new phenomenon. 
And in the many years to follow, we received hundreds of messages as well from couples that had decided to do the same. To also have their mutual feet, feet touching moments. And the beautiful thing here, it was a moment born out of our shared differences. that this admiration and understanding of a divergent perspective came into and helped us tremendously was uh, started out with our professions. To all like my profession as a social media influencer at first seemed like a shallow and superficial occupation. <laughs> to Deepa, my profession as a diplomat at the Foreign Service seemed like a boring, paper-pushing kind of job where all day, every day I would do is just write memos and briefs for some ambassador. And though we both had a point, um, it took a change in perspective and a true understanding of the other to conceive of what would come next. The combining of our two worlds in the birth of a new foundation called Post for Change. So Post for Change is a unique organization that cultivates the reach of social media influencers, the online generation, and the sheer power of social media to use that and to achieve social change. So in short, social media for social change. And we do so by organizing influencer trips and online campaigns on topics ranging from women's rights to climate change. But this was this was not possible without a grand shift in perspective. Because where I consider social media to be superficial, inactive, and sometimes even negative, Deepa saw its true potential and how it could also be used for good. And again, as with the shoe and the sound, we were both right. Because social media can be all that. As one of last year's most watched TED Talks clearly lays out, social media has the danger to polarize, spread fake news, undermine democracy, and at times even incite violence. And in some ways, the very platforms that were intended to connect us have divided us. And changes to the regulatory framework is very much needed to prevent this all. But until that is done, we decide to look at it upside down and use it upside down. And when you do that, the superficial can become influential. The inactive can become active. And the negative can become positive. For as much as social media and its influencers can be the culprit, by using them upside down, they can actually also counterbalance the polarization and build the bridges of understanding. And since I managed to come around and appreciate and understand our different perspectives on social media, Poster Chains has worked with UNICEF and UN Women, both organizations that I very much respect and already worked with in my work at the Foreign Ministry. On our very first project with UNICEF India, we went to raise awareness for menstrual hygiene. Um, and we worked with four great influencers on that trip, and we visited some of UNICEF's programs uh, on the ground to conquer this important taboo-facing topic in India. And with, this, with just four influencers, the campaign reached a total of 110 million people across social media. Let me, let me Four influencers, 110 million. And let me tell you, working as a diplomat at the Foreign Service, I know for a fact that no brief or memo of mine has ever reached even one million. <laughs> but this trip did. So it also proved to us that the concept of using social media for social change is so potent that it has now become post for change goal to aid a quarter million women to achieve menstrual hygiene and to add a half a billion trees to fight, to fight the effects of climate change. So if from the social media skeptic that I was, I have now taken even a sabbatical from my work as a diplomat to focus on achieving those goals. And because the staggering numbers of our first trip also begs the question, if four influencers in India can reach 110 million people, what would happen if we would get 
10 influencers each in 20 countries. Is it insane to think that we could reach a large population of this world? And that asks them to plant one tree? Can we really bridge the gaps created by social media by actually using the platform upside down? And that is what Post for Change is all about. No of the above was only possible by admiring, understanding an opposite view, and ultimately adapting our perspective. So I guess the moral of the story here today is, the next time you encounter a real life example of the shoe, where the opposite view frustrates you, be it on politics, be it on religion, be it on any other topic, remember Yanni versus Laurel, pink versus blue, and challenge yourself to appreciate, understand, and convert the difference into your advantage. Thank you very much.